Caesar's bloody death at the points of assassins' daggers cast the Roman world into turmoil and has driven you, our Pharaoh, Cleopatra VII, into grief and mourning. Gone is your lover, mentor, confidant, and powerful ally. Octavian, his teenage adopted great-nephew, has been named as heir, but the more experienced Mark Antony, previously a consul to Caesar, has become the nominal head of state somewhat to the ire of the young Octavian. Not surprisingly, Caesar's will made no mention of your son by him, Ptolemy Caesar, popularly known as Caesarian. Desiring safety for yourself and your child, and, as always, seeking to preserve the power of Egypt, you have departed Rome for Alexandria. Despite all the leagues between Rome and yourself, you cannot leave behind all of its internecine squabbles. Powerful men still vie for power. Your support and the access to the riches of Egypt would be a great asset to any faction. For you to back a winner in this power struggle is critical. Siding with the loser could easily result in the end of Egypt. The dramatic showdown between the rival Roman factions recently occurred at Philippi, where Mark Antony's Caesarians decisively beat the forces of Brutus and Cassius. Antony, Octavian, and Lepidus have now carved up the empire for joint rule, with Antony claiming the eastern portion, which includes Egypt. Not long after the battle, Mark Antony summoned you to join him at Tarsus in Asia Minor, so that you might better explain why you had been slow to cast your lot with the Caesarians. Not one to be summoned like a lapdog, you wisely declined to respond. After all, you know better than most that it is much better to see a Roman under your own terms and conditions, not his. Thus you, Pharaoh Cleopatra, have returned home to Alexandria, to Egypt. It is now time to expand the glory of this magnificent city, founded by the great Alexander, whose tomb is still frequented by visitors. Alexandria's renowned Great Library continues to attract scholars from all over the world. The bright beacon of the wondrous Pharaoh's Lighthouse still burns so that seafarers can safely make their way through the treacherous waters of the harbor. Now you can further enrich the beauty of the city by constructing the expansive Caesarium in honor of your former lover and your young son. Additionally, ensure your own successful passage into the afterlife by building another mausoleum so that you can be duly worshipped after your journey into the field of reeds. The next time Mark Anthony calls for you, perhaps he will employ a bit more tact. Hey guys, welcome back to the Land of the Pharaohs. I'm Sajuk, and we're heading into Cleopatra's Alexandria, the legacy of a queen. And it's obvious that we have to build something a little larger than what we built before. We have to build a city supporting 10,000 people, six palatial estates, and very high ratings across the board. Um. So basically, the mission Ptolemy's Alexandria, if you built up, like, say, 10,000 people like I did and seven palatial states, you've just got to repeat that, essentially. Culture is higher, which is a problem, but so is King. They're not really a problem. So all we have to do is basically duplicate Ptolemy's Alexandria, but with some changes. We've got to build a caesarium and um, a mausoleum, so that's what this rating equates to. Looks as if there's going to be some... Uh, issues across the known world that we might have to deal with, so we're going to have to be prepared for pretty much anything. And uh, maybe um, some extortions from Rome, I'm not too sure. And uh, we're going to continue on hard mode, let's head to the city. Loyal soldiers rejoin us, an archer's fort from the previous mission can be put in. I thought it was an infantry fort as well, but apparently it is just um, archers this time, so let's just pause. Now we start with a dynasty mansion right here, and down here we have the two monuments, the Alexandra's Library and the Mausoleum. It looks as if someone's gone around and put thickened walls all around here with a bunch of towers. And there's also a road just going around the outside here for that stuff, which is good. Uh, lots of farmland, still the same amount of reeds, so no change there. Not really too many changes, just a, uh, maybe a little bit more reeds up here. But other than that, not too much change on this map. It's just the same as before. Uh, just maybe a little bit more of an extension to this little bit here. And this little island is a bit bigger too. Pharos Lighthouse. There's nothing to build up there, so don't have to worry about it. What's the two monuments? A Caesarium, which is pretty big. I'm not too sure where I'm going to put this. And another mausoleum that we can put pretty much anywhere. Oops. 
Not sure where I'll put this, but I'll find a location for it. I'm not too bothered by it. Grain and barley. No clay. So the clay wasn't there in Alexander's time. It was there in Ptolemy's time, and then Cleopatra's time, it's gone. And the barley sort of was there, wasn't there, is now there. Now, of course, you can justify that by the fact that it is now 40 BC. When the clay was there in 300 BC, it would is expected to buy another 260 years later, the clay would have gone. So that's not a problem. Same gods as before. Really nothing too different this time. We just have to do exactly what we did before. Uh, we still have a lot of money. 33 and a half thousand demons. That is just pretty much infinite money. I can just go straight into setting up whatever I want right away. I don't have to do too much. And um, So here we are at Alexandria. Rome is here because there's no uh, Italy up here. But this just simply... Uh, signifies where Italy is. They sell us weapons, they buy grain, barley and jewellery. Not too useful. Athens sells lots of pottery and wine. They also buy grain, barley, gems and marble. We can't make these so they only buy some cheap old, um, raw materials. Nosso sells pottery, they also buy grain, beer and papyrus. We can actually make all of those which is not too bad. And Komi sells marble, which I think we need. They also buy beer, which we can sell. Tyre buys grain and straw. Worthless, they sell linen and wood. Gaza sells lots of wood and buys papyrus. Not a lot of papyrus sells. There's only, what, 5,000 papyrus available to be sold? What about 20? Oh, they buy some papyrus too. So we can sell papyrus, but not a lot of it this time. Let's get the music back. Eonet sells barley, which is useless because we can... Um, make our own. They also sell flax and linen, which is going to be useful. So we can get 5,000 linen from there. And probably additional linen support as well. We can get another 2,500 there. So 7,500 linen, it's not too bad. Probably additional trade routes will open up to provide more. And they also sell 40 sandstone, which we are going to need. Um, that's the only source of it, apparently, I think. Uh, they sell, I mean, we've got 8,000 barley import, but that's useless because we can make our own. Infinite amounts, rather. Um, lots of people buying luxury goods, though. I mean, we can sell. How many luxury goods is this we can sell? 2,500, 5,000. Um, 7,500. So we can sell, like, 10,000 luxury goods. That's insane. We can get a lot of gems. We could get, like, what is that? 6,500 gems? That's actually a lot. So maybe I should do a luxury good import-export. I'm not too sure, but I'm going to focus on grain and papyrus simply because we can sell, and beer too. Lots of people willing to buy grain. Just count them all. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five cities willing to buy grain. That's not too bad. And, um... Yeah, maybe more trade routes will open up because it seems as if there's quite a few missing that I would expect to be open. So yeah, not too much to talk about on this one. We've got grain and barley, which makes up simple exports. We've also got reeds. Now, but given that we have barley, I will set up barley production over here with beer there. Grain down here. And I'll just set up a little area over here for the papyrus. And they can just wander as needed. I may even set up a little bit extra reed production over here. I'm not too sure. So yeah, that's the plan of the city. We don't really need to do too much. We just need to set up a couple of housing blocks. I'll come back in once I've done it. Okay, so this is what I've got for. I've gone for two housing blocks like this. Now, there is a little tile gap there and a little tile gap there. I will fill these up later once there's no more immigration happening. But I just wanted to make sure that people could come straight in without having to go around in circles. So that would just slow down immigration. Now, up here, the dynasty mansion that was here, I have deleted it. Uh, just simply because we don't have any personal savings anyway. And uh, leaving it up there is going to use up this coastline, this area right here that I want to have as many fishing boats as I can. I'm going to have... Literally anywhere that's not a dock or a warship like up here, it's just going to be fishing boats. We need a lot of fish production on this one. And we're going to feed everyone up to fancy residence. And I want to get the fishing going early, um, just so that they don't take so much. Because I've noticed, um, I noticed it before in um, the regular Pharaoh missions, but having the, um, the fish get the second type of food get taken up when these houses are common residents, takes longer for them to all get access. So if I get it early and a bigger supply, 
it means that they will all reach the second type of food much bit, uh, quicker and there will be a bigger supply available. So that will help a lot. Now I'm going to just go for my double block designs that I had before in Ptolemy's Alexandria. So four right here and then an elite block just over here. And what I will do, since we do need 10,000 people and it was a struggle, we just barely got over 10,000 with the housing that we did have. I will probably set up another housing block just here or somewhere else on this map. And not too sure where, maybe another one in here will destroy some of these walls or something up at the wall around a different direction. I'm not too sure. And down here I set up farms, I put these houses down first, then these ones because that's the right thing to do. Um, just to know, I did do a lot of planning because I was trying to work out the best way of building this city about which way I wanted the housing box to go. I was thinking of having them so that they would go this way, so parallel to this um, additional road, whatever it's called. I don't think it has a name, but this road here, I wanted to add them parallel to that, but uh, I realised that doing so would waste space because I wouldn't get enough housing blocks. I would only get one and then a big gap, which I suppose is not too bad, but it's, I'd rather not move this canopic street. Uh, this time around, but I'm going to have to anyway because I will have to put the, the block in there, but that's not a problem. What I mean to say is I didn't want to move the Canopic Street by having them parallel, but I'm just going to have them perpendicular, which is fine. don't think I can fit a housing block in here, but that's not a problem. I can just stick any kind of housing block, whatever I want, and it's going to be fine. Um, so I have checked the triggers again, just to refresh myself. There's only two places that buy beer, that's No Source and Encomi. Um, Rome and Athens buy barley, but that's not really worth it because there's no reason to export barley. I mean, I know it ex exports for more, like 37 compared to 21, but barley uh, we will be using to make beer instead. Papyrus isn't really much of an export, it's just 7,500 sheets only across a couple of trade partners, so not too many, like, compared to like last time. I mean, compared to like uh, Alexandria, uh, Alexander's Alexandria, I had the first one. We could sell like infinite papyrus. Then Ptolemy's Alexandria just dwindled a little bit but it was still quite high and this one no one really wants papyrus. So we're not going to be selling too much papyrus right now but I suspect that additional trade routes on this map will become available. It just seems as if there should be more trade routes available. Maybe like Kyrene or Buhen or something I'm not too sure. We may get additional routes on this one. Uh, I'm also checking these trade routes over here. We could get incense from these two guys. But I'm not going to trade with Gaza because apart from buying papyrus they are useless because we can get enough wood from Enkome and Tyre respectively. Enkome we need anyway and Tyre we will need to get additional linen imports. But that's not a problem right now. Uh, Enkome we need for white marble which I believe this Caesarium requires. Um, let's just have a look. Um, marble and granite. Now actually I just wanted to check that. Yeah, we are going to have to get an additional trade route from somewhere because none of our open trade routes actually sell granite. So we cannot build the Caesarean because it actually requires granite. I didn't realise that before, but we need granite and it's not even listed. So that means that there's not a single trade route open or available that allows us to import this commodity. Now, that's kind of weird because in um actually no it's not weird because in Alexander's Alexander we could someone bought it but we couldn't import it. So right now none of our cities that are available sell granite. So clearly I think somewhere like Wast must sell granite because I think that's a granite location. Maybe Buhen as well, I'm not too sure. So yeah, additional traders are gonna become available because we need them to win this mission. So yeah, I'm just gonna let these houses fill up and I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Okay, so we get a gift of chickpeas for no reason. Uh, a thousand chickpeas uh, from Men Nefer, which is great. Now, I did have to delete everything that was in this loop because they, they are just now starting to evolve. Um, move in, rather. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to accept the chickpeas here because I've got no use for them right now. Also, I've gone ahead and just started planning out this area for where I'm going to have my beer production. Because why not? Now, let's just start to put back all the things that were here that are only just starting to move in now. So that was Pata there. We'll put all this stuff back that I spent a um, bit of time and money on, but that's not a problem. 500 people, um, not a concern. Uh, we've got more than enough money. Uh, one thing to note, there's those chickpeas. If you have a look at the city treasury, this mission started with 56,000 demons. That effectively means we will not go into debt. Now, we started with 30,000. 
because the developer obviously went ahead and spent a bunch of money on the walls all around this city and um, yeah that's wasted some money. Not a problem. Let's actually just put down a roadblock there and there because we've got a, a firehouse and an architect's post right here and this is just where all our distribution is going to be for all these housing blocks. Well some of it anyway, some beer, pottery and all that. Now we have to import pottery. Now we can get 4,000 pottery from Menefer. We can get, how much else pottery can we get? We can get another 4,000 from Athens, so that's 8,000 pottery. We can also get another 2,500 from Nosos. So that's 10,500 pottery a year. Given that additional triggers will probably open up over the course of this mission, I suspect they will be able to get more than enough pottery import without any issues at all. So got those chickpeas, these farms are only just starting to get onto the proper fertility stuff now, now that the employees are starting to move in, which is good. Uh, because you could use some help, Gaza wants to give me 600 planks of wood, that's useful, I'll just accept it. Free gifts, and it's not even the end of the first year, that's not too bad. Although I suspect they're going to ask for stuff, so that's why I'm starting to plan out this. That's probably why we got so many starting funds. So yeah, houses are evolving, they're moving in. With the unemployment, I'll just put down more grain farms. Might even start on our um, beer production, or barley rather. So we'll just add a couple of barley farms over here. Now hopefully you get up to these houses. If not, I will be very, very annoyed. Let's just put down some mitigation like so. Uh, let's see. You are the... Yeah, you can get access to the housing just barely if you don't walk backwards over your, your tile, but that's not a concern. So that's enough barley. We'll start to produce some uh, beer with that. And um, I'm actually going to have to just do a double roadblock here just because I can get three farms in there. We'll just farm barley for now. We'll not try to uh, make any beer for now. So yeah, we're getting everything going. At this point, it's just a rapid evolution of uh, houses to get everything going. So I'll come back in later if anything of interest happens. Okay, what's this? Because we accepted the gift of 600 planks of wood from Gaza, they want us to send 1,000 baskets of grain. Now let's just have a quick look. We have 2,800 stockpile because of the last harvest. I haven't been paying attention too much to this area because I have been working out how to set up this area for our fishing. And I think I've come up with a fairly simple solution to that. We've got just basically a zigzagging road with a little bit of housing there and a little bit of housing there. They're not going to get water because there'll be too much undesirable stuff here. Now the reason I've got the housing like this is because there's no way to put a housing up here. With the, far, uh, the fishing configuration I want, that will support three, but no, no houses or anything else can be built up there. Which is also why I put down like three of these, just to make sure that there's enough coverage. So we're going to have as many fishing boats as I can fit into this space, just as many as we can. Um, there, 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 just anywhere around this area. In fact, I'll probably extend down here because as we don't have any clay pits, this area is pretty much useless. And we can just set up even more fishing boats all the way along here without any problem at all. We can even start going up this bit as well, even though this is just miles and miles away from the, the city. I, I could set it up here, but I'll probably end up setting a bunch over here as well. So we just want insane fish production on this one. Now our unemployment has continued to grow and it will just keep going up as people move in. Uh, but we are starting to take that down now quite nicely with all of our uh, uh, industries and the like. Let's just not get any more from you because there's no more chickpeas to get. Which means that you are basically stuck. Uh, so we're just going to set this to not to get and we'll just feed someone the thousand chickpeas and then I will get rid of this. So we'll just feed you guys the chickpeas. I know that's going to cause you to end up evolving and devolving, but I don't really care. We just want to get rid of those pheasant chickpeas that we don't really have any use for in the city. In terms of the ship right, I'm just going to put it there because that's fine. It's nearest wherever we need it. And if I just check one, two, three. We can have a house there and a physician there. We're going to have a lot of service buildings, but that's not really a problem. We just need a lot of uh, production on this one, one, two, three. And we can just save on space by making sure that one tile buildings go where they need to go. Let's see, one, two, three, there. One, two, three. I can just do that there, because then I can have 
the ship right there, that it's not a problem. So that just makes efficient use of the space by not uh, wasting any, essentially. Now, if I were to put uh, fishing boats over here, I will probably connect it to another set of houses. Maybe even have these guys go along uh, in a different way and have this touch there rather than like this. I may have to reconfigure it, but it's not a problem. Now, we have spent about 13,000 demons with no exports actually set up, but we do have... Uh, we do have enough... Um, um, stuff getting made. We've got our exports actually running, we just don't have them getting sold. We do have grain and all that kind of stuff as well. So we'll feed these guys the chickpeas just to get rid of them and then I can delete this. And uh, once I've got rid of all the grain, in fact we didn't really need to accept the grain there, we'll just set that to not accept, which is fine. Exports, well they're pretty much going to just be grain and beer, whatever I can get my hands on. Uh, we don't really have much papyrus potential on this one, there's only a small amount of reeds. And eventually we are going to have to just stop papyrus exports because the amount of papyrus that we are going to need to support this city is just going to be insane. We are going to need tons of schools all over the place and libraries and things like that. Now we don't actually need the libraries to be connected to our papyrus supply, which is a good thing. But uh, we are just going to need an insane amount of papyrus and with so little export potential on this one, there really is no point given that there's not enough leads to support that. So yeah, we'll just keep on going, I'll just come back in if anything of it just happens, we'll let these guys move in, I'll start to prepare Warship Island and uh, this kind of stuff as well. Okay, this is really annoying. Uh, because I accepted that gift from Menefer, the chickpeas, I now need to set up some papyrus. Now, I don't have any papyrus industry. I'm actually just going to... Um, here we go again, men that are asking for papyrus but they actually make it themselves. I don't understand this game at times. Uh, can we get a papyrus import from anywhere else? Don't think so because that is pretty much an Egyptian commodity and the only place that sells it is men Nefer. So um, I'm not going to waste time importing it, we can just produce that very quickly. We'll just put down one reed gatherer there and a couple of papyrus makers like so. And you can just um, accept that papyrus very quickly. Now we are emptying the wood because I have gone ahead and put down this uh, shipwright which is going to start to work on building our stuff. So we'll just put down... Oh, how much unemployment do we have? We've only got a short amount of unemployment. It's not ready yet to build anything. Uh, let's just delete these trees. They're just in the way. Now I'm going to have to hope that these asps get out of the way because I'm going to have to block them in. Uh, there we go. I'll just slow this down just to make sure they don't run away from me. There we go. They're blocked in. So now we can get the reeds without any hassle. Now there's only a couple of asp locations up here, there and there. There are no asps anywhere else apart from way down here. But that's not a concern. We can block them in later. So we've got enough barley in coming in that we can probably produce more than enough beer. In fact, we can just increase our beer production quite significantly. We can sell quite a bit of beer. Norso buys it and Encomi does too. And we can also sell them grain and other kind of crap as well. So we'll get this reed skeg produced, that'll make some papyrus for Menefe and we'll just send that off when we've got it made. So yeah, we'll keep on going, I'll just come back in if anything of it just happens. I think this must be the mission of large gift gifting, if that makes sense. I assume you know what I mean by that. But um. We sent off the baskets of grain to Gaza and they now went to give us 700 luxury goods which is very useful and uh, we're just starting to feed our people with grain properly now. We're just going to put the, the luxury goods up here because we've got nowhere else to put them and we might as well sell them. Who buys them? We can sell luxury goods to ba uh, not Barrio, it's just Menefer, Eunet and a whole bunch of different places. We can probably just sell them to Nossos really since we're going to open trade with them very shortly. We've got plenty of beer being made, which is good. We've also got loads of grain. Now, I'm just about to get enough papyrus uh, to make that uh, to meet that goal, which is going to be good. Uh, hopefully, we should get enough in time uh, before it runs out of time. We've got not too long to go. Now, we spent mostly half of our funds. We don't have any exports uh, going, but we do have them actually running, if you know what I mean. We're not actually selling anything yet, but we do have them running, which is the main, the main point. I think we'll start to work on beer um, exports first. There's those luxury goods which we can sell. And uh, once these two beer pushers come up, we will just sell uh, the stuff that we have to Nossos. 
So yeah, let's just keep on going. We've got everything going here. We don't really need to worry too much. We've got unemployment, so we can just continue to increase our various industries in the light. Okay, so I've opened up the treasure to Norsos, and they've just bought 700 beer and 400 luxury goods, which is going to be great. And uh, we've got a kingdom rating boost from setting off the papyrus, which is good. Now, I've gone ahead and used that as an impetus to start setting up the area for proper papyrus production. Uh, so let's just put down, what's our unemployment like? It's high. City health is poor, that's because we're not feeding enough people, which is not a problem, we can just feed more. Uh, let's put down, I'm going to leave a gap, one, two, three of these. And then as many of these as we can put down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's a lot of um, expense, but it really doesn't matter. That will clear out most of the unemployment. Now, I have realised if I want to get some farms down this side, I'm going to have to make it come from this direction because I won't be able to get it over here without touching a bit of the, the building. I don't really want that. Say that, I could just extend this down like that and it would be fine, but I don't. I'm not too sure about that. That's not a concern right now. So we've got um, these coming online, which is uh, sorting out everything. They are not working because Reed's production has been turned off, but we can sort that. So all we have to do is just feed more people. We've got employee shortages, so that's not a problem. So our exports are running now, which is good. Everyone's getting fed. We've got our exports, which is all that matters. And I've also gone ahead and just colonise this little area, making sure everything places in exactly where we need it to make sure we've got good city health. And we'll have six more ships down this bit and then the rest can just be fishing boats, which means this area will be connected. I will put down a little bit of a road connection. Not too sure how I'm going to do it, I'll probably connect it to the area that has the elite housing, but that's not a concern right now. We're just going to sell as much beer and uh, luxury goods as we can, because that's pretty much our export. Beer and luxury goods, that's all the luxury goods gone. We can now focus on beer. So yeah, we've got that going. Now we just need to think about selling other stuff. Now we can sell plenty of grain. I think that was higher. That was uh, three dots, I think, at the beginning of the mission. It is now two, so that has been decreased by a hidden event I never noticed, but that's not a problem. And uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll just keep on going. We might start to work on increasing our um, production of grain, but I'm not too sure about that right now. We'll just stockpile some more of it for now. Maybe we we'll start to work on excess barley export because we have way too much in stockpile now. And I think someone does buy it anyway, so let's just have a look. Uh, Norsos doesn't buy it, but we know that Athens does, and we'll need them to get additional pottery. So maybe I'll just start to work on additional uh, barley uh, stuff as well. I'm not too sure. We'll think about it. Okay, continue to sell more beer, which is the name of the game right now. We are going to just set up a yard here to go and get barley, even though we don't really need to sell it. Now, just after I cut it off, we got a request from Gaza um, for more stuff. So, basically, what they did is at the very beginning of the mission, they asked, they gave us a gift of wood. They then asked for grain. As a result of sending the grain, they gave us luxury goods. And as a result of accepting that gift of luxury goods, they're asking for beer. So, let's just head, uh, set that off. That's probably going to be a constant chain reaction, but we will see... We're selling enough beer to Norsos to keep us in the black. With that money, we can now just set up um, three warships. Now, I suspect that we will be asked to send troops somewhere, which is why I'm now going into the military. Now, um, I don't know if I measured it earlier. I might have did. I might have done. Rather, I did reload, so I've lost the three, four of archers. But given it was just archers and not infantry, I'm not too concerned. If it had included infantry, I would have been fine with that. But I guess they only want us to have archers. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to give us uh, infantry as well, but I guess uh, we didn't have enough infantry to carry over, so that's not a problem. So, beer, they're now going across the map to go and get beer, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, we will just stop that export once these guys have bought up that amount, so we'll not export anything to there. Uh, God's we're getting a little bit upset, uh, Ra in particular, so I went ahead and put down some shrines for him. I think we just need to give him more shrines, so let's just do one, two, three. I'm leaving that gap because I'm going to have one, two, three, one, two, three. Three. They're going to just be for the, the storage yards accepting fish, so don't want to uh, use up too much of that space. So here, we're not going to have too many shrines up here because we can't put down any more. And uh, let's just see, shrine, shrine, and then just an extra shrine there and there. And you got access to employees, 
Nope, which is good because I disconnected this area. Because I don't want the towers working, there's no point. So yeah, we need to just grow our population and that will allow us to start working on our papyrus export as well, I think. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, so we're starting to grow our city quite significantly and rapidly and we are now putting down yards to go and get additional papyrus and beer because we need lots of that up here. And of course these things get out of sync once there's um, 1600 stockpile. So let's just set this to accept. Unfortunately this barley is uh, just starting to feed these guys which I don't want. And ooh, because uh, to satisfy citizens needs the city of Rome requests that you send 500 luxury goods in a level of us. So that's a problem because we don't have a gems set up right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is who sells us luxury goods? We can sell uh, import luxury goods from Athens which I will probably do even though it's very expensive. Now can we import gems? We can import gems from Cinebit Kadeem which I'm probably going to do because I need to import copper from there as well. Uh, yeah. Can we get gems from anyone else? Planet sells a whole load of gems. In fact, I might not even trade with Cinebit Kadeem because they sell gems and copper by land trade route and only buy cheap things. But I could sell papyrus to Planet. He also sells a lot more gems and a second type of luxury goods. So I think for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import the luxury goods into a random yard from uh, whatever. I'll just import the 500 that's been asked for. I will properly set up luxury goods stuff later. Uh, I'm probably going to do that over here just to keep it out of the way. Uh, probably connect to, I'm not too sure where I'm going to put it. Uh, the, the city's not starting to flow into my mind just yet about how I want it to look but we will start to work on that very soon as well. So yeah, uh, the, the sort of the, the, the final struct, what I get at is the final structure that I want my city to have is not really finalised yet. I've only got the bare bones in my mind. So yeah, we'll just keep on going. We're going to just sell beer and all that kind of stuff over to Nosos and the like. And we'll just keep on going with the city because it's starting to take shape, just slowly. Okay, due to diplomatic activity, a trade route to own can now be opened. I suspect we know what that's going to be for. And because we sent the 500 pouches of luxury goods, we are going to get some weapons. So helping Rome uh, by sending them their luxury goods, which is basically an extortion request. It happens continually throughout the mission. And they will give us weapons without having to import copper, which is very useful. And our kingdom rating will go up from doing that as well. Which will make it very easy to hit 80. Now let's just have a look at Owen. They sell 40 sandstone a year. They also buy beer and sell us more pottery. They also sell the required granite needed to build the monuments. Uh, the caesarium rather. So we can get all of the resources we need from Owen. So we can get, what is that, 80 sandstone a year. That's not too bad. They also buy beer by land trade route. Over here I've set up the area for gems and... Uh, weapon production. So let's just go ahead and put down some forts. Now we are actually short of money so let's not do that right now because uh, I don't know where that money's gone because we've only exported papyrus and beer which we are getting plenty of up here. Uh, so the weapons um, and all that will help. We're they're buying papyrus, they're going to buy more. I wonder if that's Pwenet so that's giving us money. So let's just go ahead and put down uh, let's just turn this map around a bit. We'll put down an archer's fort right there and we'll just start to train up some archers. And we'll just put all the military over here because then they'll just be out of the way. And we've got the weapons to do that and all that kind of stuff as well. So we sold 1100 papyrus. We're still selling papyrus over there. They must have gone a far distance to go and get papyrus. Which is kind of problematic but that's not an issue. We've got beer which is good. Let's actually just increase our, bar uh, our beer use by doing that. I'll we'll also go ahead and fill out this block here just because we needed the employees. I was thinking about putting the appendages like that but I just decided this was the most compact. We don't need that much production so it's not really a, a concern. Let's just import to you Athens. You're Athens buying up uh, barley there which is not too bad. We've maxed that out which has given us money. Maybe you've bought everything you need to so you're just going to do your thing which is not a problem. Let's import 400 gems and 400 copper. Now we do need weapons, gems and luxury goods to be stockpiled for our monument. Now I am, uh, the game guides for this mission suggest that you dispatch all of these things before you actually build any monuments. Which I'm going to do. Normally I don't do that 
But we are going to do that this time around simply because it does suggest doing that in case it mixes up where the, the things go to the monuments. So um, I am going to dispatch all the burial provisions before we uh, build any monuments and that will just save on any confusion. Now can we put the caesarean right there? No we can't, it's in the way of the, the thing. Now, I'm not too sure where I'm putting the caesarean. I may uh, end up just building it somewhere uh, like here. If I actually fits in there quite nicely, I could put a housing block right there. So we'll have the caesarean right here. Uh, let's just turn this around. So we'll put the caesarean there. And then the mausoleum could go somewhere else with a housing block right there. And that's going to look quite nice, I think. So I think our next goal is to start working on getting fish. So let's just put down as many fishing boats as we can over here. There we go. Loads of fish. You could just accept fish. And you. And we'll have a couple, <coughs> have a couple of granaries getting the fish over. Now, I think you're within range of here, so you, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. In fact, let's just make sure this road goes the right way by doing this. And then a road blocking. And that just allows me the space to put down the final housing block there. And just to make sure that we don't have any issues, we are just going to road block there and put down a firehouse there and an architect's post right there. But we're not going to get fish just yet because there's not going to be any in the stockpile. So we're going to import the gems. I've decided that we're just going to import all gems and copper from Planet because they do at least buy papyrus. Cinebicadeep, yes it's a land treasure, but we've got this connected to the dock, so there's really no point. And um, yeah, so put down all these fishy boats has cut down on our unemployment, which is a good thing. But we now need to start thinking about evolving more houses, so I think maybe we need more grain farms. We are starting to outstrip our grain supply as well. Let's just put down two more, uh, well, as many grain farms as we can fit just here. And that should be fine. Like so. Now, hopefully most of you can get, some of you are actually not working, which is not very useful. Let's just um, delete a couple of tiles of roads just to make sure you go up to these houses. If necessary, I will just put down additional houses right here because they can be served by the back here. So let's actually just do that. Let's just delete some of that. And um, just circle that round. And then we can just do, actually let's just make sure that this touches. Uh, so let's just do that and irrigation like so. There we go. So yeah this will allow these houses to get covered by these guys and not have any issues. In fact let's just make sure that that touches there and have a quicker route through in case he wants to spawn from the back. And that just makes sure everything's nice and dandy. So yeah we'll just keep on going and I'll come back in if anything of interest happens. Now that we've got some additional houses here that should help with making sure all of these are working effectively. Okay, so we've hit our first step. It's taken a long time to hit the first step, but we were eventually going to do it because we're not really selling much papyrus now. How much do we get in rescue funds? Four fives is not too bad. Now, we did import a bit too much copper last week because I turned off that copper import at the wrong time, which glitched it. But that's not a problem. We're not going to import any more copper or gems just for a little while because we need to build up on our export potential, which means we need to get more papyrus and all that up here. Start to fish, which is good. We've also got ahead and put down a couple of uh, entertainment things just to start evolving our houses, which will help as well. I think we also need to just put down a bazaar right here and just get you getting grain, like so. Uh, not too sure where I'm going to put the distribution uh, yards, because we are going to need some pottery down here. I'm not too sure if this is too far away. It may be too far if I put them up here. They may have walked too far, I'm not too sure. But I will have a yard up here accepting pottery and probably just another yard down here getting it. Because these two will be close enough for here, but these two will probably be too far for up here. So we'll just have a getting yard down here and an accepting yard up here. Let's just set this to accept uh, pottery and that should be fine. So we'll build up on our beer. In fact, let's just turn off beer export for now. We don't need to do that. We need to build up our beer getting air. You should be getting beer, which is a problem. 
So yeah, I've also put down additional reed gatherers because the reed supply is so far away that they're taking forever to get reeds, which means that these are slowing down. I may need to put down additional reed gatherers over here just a bit closer just to try and boost that uh, a little bit, but I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it. Meanwhile, our harvest is coming in, which is good. Uh, let's just put down our... No, let's just put this a different direction. Let's just delete that. Like so. And we'll just put down a well here and delete that. Because that covers both of them, so that's fine. So yeah, we start to evolve our houses, which is the right thing. And uh, we need to do some statues along here. Uh, not statues, uh, more shrines. The more shrines I can put down around here, um, the nicer it'll be because it'll keep the gods happy as well while improving desirability. We'll also do a shrine wall up here as well. Hey, we'll continue to build up our military, which we need. They're first level veterans without doing anything. Did they walk onto the map? I'm confused. Did they walk onto the map? Because they should be first level veterans when I haven't done anything. If they are first level veterans from the previous mission, then that's actually very useful. But I, I'm not too sure on that. Actually, yes, because the only way to get the uh, to veteran without a Cess Temple complex is by battle. We've not had any battles, so that's clearly troops from the previous mission, which I would have assumed would have broken, but apparently not. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, so Athens is in need of some beer. Eight months to comply, we've got more than enough. And uh, I'm just sort of scouting out an area where to put down this mausoleum. The chances are that I'm going to just end up being very lazy and just putting it right against the Alexandra's Library. So two mausoleums with the Alexandra's Library in the middle. Now, we do have enough weapons. We've got two weapons stored there and a bunch of excess, which is going to be good. And of course, we don't need to really import copper. We will get free weapons from Rome by helping them, which is not really a concern. Unemployment is decided to become available, which is good. And um, yeah, our papyrus supply is struggling because it's too far away. So let's just put down um, let's just delete some of these trees. Let's just put down a couple of extra reed gatherers just a bit closer. Malaria is not a good thing at all. You have succumbed to malaria even though there is an apothecary right there. Now that is probably because they are so close to the reeds that the risk is really, really high. Like this house, for example, it's just going to get malaria. So we'll just delete it and replace that house. And I'll probably just um, put down two malaria things there. And I'll we'll just put another one there just to make sure. So it's not a problem, we will just rectify that very easily. We just need to get rid of some of the problems with reed gathering. In fact, let's just delete you two because you're too far away. You guys should be fine, um, but we will have a couple of extra ones just a bit closer just to try to speed up. But, but this is just the tapping it so much that it's not really something I can speed up anymore. Let's just put a bridge there. Let's just... Um, I'm not even going to be building up here, so let's just delete this wall because it's just getting in the way now. And we'll just put a bridge there, and that allows them access to some additional reeds. But they are going to be wandering so far now that I don't think it's really worth it trying to get uh, Papyrus exports running at any uh, maximum capacity. There's not enough reeds, uh, and I don't think we can import any, no. So yeah, we are starting to reach a, uh, a point where papyrus is just getting out stripped by the amount of reeds that we can't produce any more papyrus. And we need to start exporting beer. Let's just export surpluses and any beer export as well. So yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, so we started to support our taxation now, which is helping to give us some more additional cash because our papyrus and beer is not enough to keep us out of uh, low funds. And um, our export of pa uh, papyrus is starting to become a problem because we can't produce enough. Um, I have put down additional uh, reed gatherers over here. We're trying to get a lot more papy uh, reed driver, which I think should be good. I may even start to consider just a little bit up here that's producing surplus papyrus and this can just be for city use or something but we are vastly outstripping the amount of reeds on this map because now it's starting to go up there which is miles away and um, we can't really get much more papyrus so I may have to resort to uh, importing some additional papyrus from men effort because we just can't support the level of exports required. Um, Athens when they accepted my gift of, well when, they, when I complied with their request for beer rather, 
they increase the amount of grain that they're willing to buy, but we're not selling grain on this map because it's not worth anything. And uh, malaria again. How on earth have these houses got access? Oh. I was so concerned just building this up that I forgot to put down basic necessities, which is dumb. This whole area is going to uh, crash and burn in Malaya, which is not very helpful. It was very close to spawning a bunch of grave robbers, which wasn't very good either, but I have taken care of that, so that's going to be good. So I've just found out a few things to take care of Malaya, which will just take that down quite significantly. There we go. We've got the unemployment to do it, so why not? I think we need to start considering just removing the... Let's just start to accept, and I will uh, just get rid of the papyrus export stepwise because there's no real point in it. Um, also feeding people fish at this low level just to get um, the fish in there because why not? If I do it at this level it means that they will have a nice big supply and they won't take so much later. But we do need to increase uh, grain, uh, no, grain, fish getting essentially because there's a lot of it but not enough getting into the system. If you spawn that way, it's going to be annoying. But I think you've spawned up that way, which is even better. You spawned some somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Oh, that's fine. You did spawn up that way. So let's just get more fish, because we are going to need a lot of fish in this city. So we've got a full four. I'm going to wait for uh, three weapons from uh, Rome, rather than importing additional copper, because there's no real point. Uh, unemployment is... Not that high, but we can support basically another warship that will help. There's some uh, wood stockpiled here as well. So we're going to stop the papyrus exports, we just can't support it anymore. And uh, there's just not enough reeds really to support it. So, yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, elect your soldiers for the Egyptian armies engaged in combat at the distant city of Kyrene. In five months, what kind of troops? Uh, land troops, we have more than enough. We'll just send that over. And with that, I'm probably going to just start training up additional archers. So let's just, um, we've got, I mean, we've got way too much money now. We've got more than enough to support the city with that taxation. We get 4,000 in tax, there'll be more this year. And um, we sell about 70 and a half, so it's not too bad. We're not importing anything, so it's all pure profit at this stage, which is good. Meanwhile, everyone's got access to the required level of food, so we're just going to put down... Um, we don't need to really put down anything. Let's just import 2,000 pottery and just have a yard here getting a quarter. And that's going to come from two water trade routes and a land trade route, so that's not too much of a problem. They can just get it from anywhere, which is fine. These two blocks will get it from there, and these two blocks will get it from over here, which is fine. So yeah, start to boost on our uh, fish, we'll send off our troops and I hope that they succeed because if they don't that'll be a problem and maybe I'll start to think about importing copper again. Let's actually just import 400 copper again and start to train up some infantry. We'll just put an infantry fort right there. So yeah, let's just keep on going, we'll come back in once the troops have returned from their attack at Kyrie. Okay, our troops have succeeded in Kyrene, our kingdom rating went up from that, we only lost one troop across each. Now, I am just starting to work on moving things around a little bit, uh, just because I want to start thinking about uh, growing the city even more. Now, we're going to have a 1, 2, 2, we're just going to do this. Now, the reason for this is because we're going to roadblock, get a roadblock in there. Why can't I put a roadblock there? That's very interesting, come on, let me put a roadblock there. I think there must be someone just standing there, which is preventing me from putting a roadblock there, which is really annoying. Just, um... Come on, I want to put a roadblock there. Why can't I roadblock on that tile? Let's just slow this down a bit. There. Bug with the dock, I'm not too sure, but we're going to have... Um, linen getting produced here on a loop, which is a little bit easier. Now for now, because we don't have any houses, I am just going to put down a little bit of housing there. Um, it will be deleted once I fill out this block, but that's not a concern right now. So we've got pottery. All around the city, let's just get pottery into these two blocks. Since they all have access to enough fish. I'll just uh, put out these remaining shrines, which will just keep all of the gods nice and happy. I haven't forgotten about the area up in the 
the up here. Don't worry, I will just sort that in a second. I just need to do that. There we go. Uh, for now, I will just put down. We're going to stop we're selling papyrus just completely. We're not selling any more of that because we just can't produce enough anymore. Not right now, anyway. And that's not a concern. So let's do that, and that will handle all those kind of issues. We're going to just start to move into more of the import export and only selling beer because we can produce uh, enough beer that we can sell out to all of our trade partners 2,500 there, 2,500 there, and we will be able to sell out another 2,500 over to. In Komi, which we may open up trade with soon. Not wasting my time with Gaza, they only sell us incense, which we don't need because we can get that from two different trade partners. They sell us wood, which we don't need because we can import that from In Komi, and they buy things we're not going to be uh, selling, so it's not a concern. So, Gaza, we don't need, we're just going to rely on Tyre and In Komi for our wood and linen, and our various other things as well. So yeah, we'll just keep on going at this point. We just need to start to grow the city really rapidly, rather. Okay, this is a little bit of a problem. We have received reports of locusts again. So a bit of a locust plague is going to have a problem, and high taxes are currently discouraging immigration. No, they're not. Here comes the locusts to just screw everything over. So no barley or grain harvests this year. They're just going to take it all up. Luckily we have a shit ton of stuff in stockpile, we're not going to export any barley this year just because we're not going to get any barley this year, so no point exporting it. I am just going to put down some houses here, uh, just so I can get rid of this little bit of feeder housing because I don't really like it. It's really annoying having feeder housing. Um, I, I mean I don't mind using feeder housing in some situations like this where it's sort of necessary because there's no way you could really set up a housing block down here. In fairness, you could, but you would start to crop into some of the, the farmland, and Manifest is going to give us grain for that, which is useful, but we don't have enough space for it, because we've got too much stockpile, basically. Grain. Now, we are starting to max out papyrus, which is good, but uh, I'm not too sure if we can really plant an export to that right now. Now, let's just set this to go and uh, get... Uh, let's not. There. So the locusts are going to come in and screw us over. Um, not a lot this time. I think they're further south than normal. Ah! Eating up everything. There's the grain. Take it. Those locusts causing a problem for Egypt once again. Never be the end of that, will it? We'll just do that. Uh, Rome wants luxury goods. We've got some of those in stockpiles. We'll just send them off. We don't have any gems in port, but that's not a problem. Now with that sorted, we can just delete these. And I will just shift things around a little bit. We'll just put that and that there. And um, we will have another dock there. So that'll be the four docks, which is not a problem. I'm not sure if that dock's been disrupted by this roadblock. If it is, it will be a problem. But that's not a problem right now. Let's just go ahead and put down a bunch of weavers. There's enough space for as many weavers as we can get in here. That will be flax. And this will be linen, and this will be linen as well. Now, who sells flax? We can import flax from Eonet. It's not open yet, so we'll just have to open it right now. Thousand Demons is quite expensive, but that's not a problem. And we're also going to import sandstone from there, which we are going to need to build the mausoleum. But I'm not going to think about that right now. So yeah, in terms of the, the fishing boats I'm going to put up here, they will be connected because I will have some fishing here and um, that will allow us to connect to over here somehow. Uh, let's just sort this out actually. Um, there. So that'll be the area for a little bit of fishing and a connection up here, which will be fine. So yeah, let's just keep on going. We've got everyone fed on fish and grain, which is going to be perfect. These guys are struggling a little bit to get grain and fish, but they will eventually stockpile it in time. So I won't evolve them too much just now. So yeah, let's keep on going. Okay, what's this? Uh, because you could use some help, the city of Cerebic Kadeem wants to send us 600 gems. That's very useful. Let's just accept. <laughs> so in the immediate, so they send us gems. And all they're doing is asking us to give us the finished product, but we already have gems in stockpiles, uh, luxury goods in stockpiles, so we'll just send them over. 
So basically all it did says, here's some gems, right, you're going to turn them into luxury goods for us. What a pain in the neck. Let's just import 800 gems, because we're going to put down a fourth jeweler just to make sure. So it's obvious that we're going to have to keep stop, a uh, stockpile of luxury goods around. Building up our military because we're just getting so many weapons and copper. Uh, I forgot to mention, um, I might have mentioned it already, but uh, I will just mention it again. Um, that um, uh, thing from Rome, the luxury goods, if you don't send them, you just get attacked. If you do send them, you get free weapons. So it's obvious that you can avoid all the military on this action by just paying up that 500 luxury goods. If you don't have any gems industries, uh, jewelry industry with imported gems set up at that point, just import some luxury goods from a trade partner. There's more than enough trade partners selling luxury goods. We've got plenty here selling incense and I've been selling wine. That's not a problem. So it's not really too much of an issue and uh, there's more than enough uh, time to fulfil it and it's only really a small attack and it'd probably be a water attack by which point you would probably have enough uh, warships anyway. So we're just going to max out a military, we don't really need this much military but I'm just going to do it anyway, why not? Uh, it's not really going to be a negative if we do that. Uh, we're going to waste time staffing these towers because we're not going to be attacked at all. So yeah. Let's keep on going. We've got a massive stockpile of reeds, even though we don't need them, and uh, that's going to be quite good. Maybe I should just start to bring back some papyrus exports again, because uh, our money is dwindling just a little bit because we're not selling as much. Let's increase our tax just a little bit. Yeah, let's just um, set up a yard to go and get more papyrus. We're not importing any wood, uh, which we are going to need, but that's not a problem right now. Let's just get... Half papyrus that will fill up from all the stockpile that's sitting down here waiting, which is not a problem. So, yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, so due to diplomatic activity, we're going to now trade with Maydoom. I just skipped past that thinking they were not going to be very useful, but they do sell us another 2,500 flax. So, we could get what's that, 5,000 flax and 5,000 linen? That's more than sufficient to support this city. So, we're just going to go ahead and open up that trade route to. Medium, it's cheap anyway, and we can get uh, more flax because if we want um, Unit to start selling as sandstone, if they're spending a bunch of time selling as uh, flax, it's not very useful. Over here, I put down some um, stuff. We put down some houses just to get this going, and I'm going to put down more fishing boats because why not? There we go. And we can also put down a booth right there just to. So I'll suffice, uh, suffice those requirements, and um, that is a dentist, we don't need a dentist. And uh, we'll just put down, um, let's just put that there, another fishing accepting yard, and we'll just roadblock that right there. And then we'll get access to some employees, which is not going to be too much of an issue. One, two, one, two, three. Let's just put them in the centre there, just to make sure that I can put down another yard here for, for linen and all that. So start to build up on a fish disc, we'll allow a connection over here which will allow me to actually set up some uh, fishing boats right here which we should have more than enough of. How many do we have? 23 fishing boats is a bit extreme. You know, that is just a little extreme but hey it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, 23. We've got more than enough fish. I can even do the import trick on this one because we are trading with somebody that sells us fish which is no sauce. So I could even get rid of these granaries and just set up yards accepting fish, which works just as well. Let's also just get rid of this second, uh, this third yard of grain that we don't need. So yeah, we're starting to grow our city quite nicely, starting to expand on everything, and yeah, we'll just keep on going. Okay, so I've just started to speed along a bit. You have seen a lot of the building of this city before in the terms of Ptolemy's Alexandria, so I'm just speeding through it. Uh, Baharia Oasis is in need of troops. Small force, you'll just take everyone, we're not going to be attacked. There you go. Um, start to move things around a bit, start to get some of these to be more for the city rather than uh, things we don't need. So this one's going to accept copper and gems rather than copper and weapons. They're going over here now. And this yard's going to be getting uh, more papyrus. We are going to start to sell that a bit more, since we might as well. And this one's just going to get beer. This was a luxury good getter, but it's not anymore. Why? Earth, is there luxury goods in there? Get out. That was a weird one. I'm not sure why um, luxury goods were going in there. They shouldn't be. Yeah, let's just export luxury goods since we've got no real use for them right now. Let's just make sure there's enough around for any requests. 
which uh, should be fine. We'll just explore Luxury Goods. It's giving us money because we are low on funds all of a sudden. I'm not too sure where that's happened from. Let's just increase wage rates a bit and just boost this a bit more. And to make sure everyone's kept happy, I'm going to tax these guys, even though it's a waste of time. It's not really a concern. These guys still have the chickpeas from the very start of the mission. Jeez, anyway, let's just get these guys getting beer. So this is enough of it around. We are low on a lot of things, so I'm now starting to increase production of just about anything to try and increase that. I think we've just got too much beer coming up here, so let's just set these to getting only a half rather than full yards because there's no point because one after they get 1600 they're not really very useful so yeah we'll just uh, continue to increase everything we've got all our military power that's it we don't need any more and all I have to do now is start to work on evolving the city to meet these goals no one's got access to dentists but once these go up to spatial department I will delete the police stations because then we don't need them anymore let's keep on going Okay, Kobe's wanted to give us nearly a full yard of marble. That's actually very useful. Uh, let's just set that up um, here because the, the monument's got to go somewhere down here, if I remember down here yet. Yeah. We're evolving everyone up into the night's next levels. Spacious apart, uh, spacious residence. We're going to get them all up to fancy residence. I've also got ahead and just put the temple complex to Ra just to sap up some unemployment. We've got plenty of that, which is going to be good. Now, I have reconsidered. I'm not going to put the mausoleum here. Um, mainly because I have put forts down and all that, it's just not going to fit. Uh, so I'll put this somewhere else. Um, not really sure where I'm going to put this, to be honest. Uh, how much food are we able to produce? 8,000, which is not too bad. We have just increased our fishing production up here. Even though we don't need to do that, it's not a concern. Uh, I'm going to have to evolve these guys to get them the two the, the levels of stuff that they need. And because we accepted the gift from Encomium, we need to send Papyrus. That's not too problematic. Uh, tax demons are starting to roll in. It'll start to compensate for our limited export potential, which is going to be absolutely perfect. The only import is basically um, a few raw materials to make stuff and some uh, pottery. That's all we need to import, which is not too bad. That's important to maintain 4,000 pottery rather than such a low number, which is going to be good. So yeah, we don't really need to evolve any more housing. I just need to start to think about boosting city coffers, which is not a concern right now. I need to also go ahead and set up an area for elite housing, and I'm going to have to leave a space here to put down one more block. I'm going to have to have a block here, and possibly another block here. I'm not too sure. I'll probably have a block here. Not too sure if I'll have one here, but I will mark out an area as if I'm going to have a block here. And just push these guys just a little bit further out of the way, just to keep them separate. So yeah, let's keep on going. Okay, so we're starting to plan out for our palatial estates. Now I've gone for a bit of a larger design than I normally do. Normally I shorten it by one tile, but I decided to do it rather than going for just a plain old block with only just a bare minimum number of palatial estates, which is six. I decided to just extend it by one tile so we don't have nine palatial estates. I might change this one later into another palatial estate which will make ten, which would be quite a lot to support but we'll see. Down here I've got some grain bean bet, some fish here and then all the stuff needed to support this bazaar. So she'll just go off and get whatever stuff she can for whatever is nearby and that will be fine. Now what I'm going to do is just to make sure that they can get to the beer quicker, I'm just going to put a little gatehouse in right there. And that will just allow them to get the goods quicker. They won't have to wander through this bit. They will be able to just go straight across there, which is quicker. Meanwhile, we'll get all the various resources. Uh, a bit more extortion for Rome. And uh, Menifer asked for beer, so I sent them out and they're giving me linen, which is good. Uh, Kingdom rating will be met very easily. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Dynasty Mansion here. Once this immigrant gets out of the way. This will add a lot of desirability to the area. And I want the Dynasty Mansion for the next mission anyway, which is actually the last one. So that's the main reason. Now we have more than enough fish in the system. But I'm suspecting that this will start to drain our fish supply. So I may have to put more fishing boats down here. But it's all prepared for that as and when we need it. Meanwhile, we're going to just put down two more weavers. And that should be more than enough. Now we're also going to just go ahead and put down uh, some statues. That's going to be... Let me just put, mark out the areas which are going to be uh, statues just so I know. So if you one, two, three, one, two, three. There. 
There we go, that's not too bad. Nice bit of balance and that just adds some desirability to it. We might as well just take the opportunity to go ahead and just do this one as well. Which is fine. We'll just keep putting up uh, these things which is going to help massively with the city. Now I'm going to just change our exports. I'm going to set this to zero because we are got a, an odd numbered unit and I don't want any trade backup issues from that. I'm just going to set this to 4,000 so as long as there's enough up here it should be fine. I guess my players are starting to drain a little bit so once uh, they have maxed out on their stuff there we're not going to do anything more. High taxes are causing some problems and that's probably just because we have too many slums but we are sorting out by developing a manners area over here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put down scribal school, mortuary, tax collector and we might as well just go ahead and put down the infamous library right now. And I could just add a couple more shines to run. Just make this place really really beautiful. Now we already have all the resources needed to get these up to the top level so it should be a problem. The only thing we are missing is actually a fair type of food but that's not a problem right now. Meanwhile we're just going to put down a school here and then just go ahead and provide everyone with more access to a mortuary. Like so. There we go. So that's just started to use up some of the linen supply. Uh, we have enough flax import. We've got like, what is this, 5,000 flax? That's more than enough. Don't think we're going to need to import uh, anything just yet, which is not going to be too bad. Uh, Shred Patah has collapsed. That is just because it's not reaching the end bit there, which is fine. We can just move that along by one tile. Uh, fire. How did that catch fire? I think it's just because he's always walking the wrong direction. So let's just put down that right at the end. And then we're going to just leave those two. So that'll be two sets of firehouses. They should be able to cover that without any problems at all. Please put that fire out. There. Hopefully this one will go and get put out as well. Probably not because the game's like that. But we'll have a couple of fishing boats and that should provide all the stuff needed for here. These just need access to two types of food. Which they will get, we'll just delete that because we don't need it anymore. So we're going to have quite a number of uh, palatials here. We need to just get the, get the first grain harvest in, which should be coming in very shortly. Just do that. And I've added a couple of extra farms, I think, because it's just a little bit low for my liking. There we go. So that should be more than enough grain farms, and that will produce enough straw to support our our zoo. Now the zoo doesn't actually need to be anywhere near houses, it's just sort of like an area-wide effect so that's not going to be too much of an issue. I'll go and statue up some of this area as well because it's getting a little bit ragged and I think I'm going to have to add in more farms. So let's just go ahead and when these reed gatherers get out of the way, we'll just put down a bunch more farms because we are in need of more grain production on this city. There we go. And I think I may need to extend out here. I'm not going to go and use this area, so I will just uh, plan out this area like so. A little bit of housing there. And what I'm going to do is just do a quick shortcut over like this. And that should be enough. And then we can just put down um, more of these. So that should be fine. That should be more than enough grade to support our city over here. We shouldn't have any issues as we start to provide, we'll do first feedings again. So that's not going to be a problem. So we'll just keep on going. We'll just come back in once we're ready to show off uh, how many palatial estates I end up getting. Okay, more troops requested at Kyrene. Now we did send troops there earlier in the mission, but more troops have been asked for over there. Two months to comply. We have more than enough troops, so we can just send them off. Now earlier I did get a... Uh, more marble. Now I am going to consider starting to set up my caesarium monument over here and if I really need more housing I will just put another housing block here because I can just set up a couple of getting granaries to bring stuff a bit closer to these guys here because this is just a bit far. Uh, meanwhile we are evolving everyone into fancy residence and that's going to be highest level common housing. Uh, once you've got th gone through your first feeding I will give you pottery as well which should be good. You've gone through your first feeding, so we could just delete your uh, police station and replace it with a dentist, get you up to the next level, which should be fine. Shrine to Bass has collapsed. Oh yeah, we can't have shrines there because they will thingy, so that's not going to be good. Let me just um, uh, go through this again. I just went past it. That was stupid. There we go. So we lost a shrine to Patar there. I will just put that over here and then a shrine to Bast up here. Now we are producing far more than enough fish that I don't really think we need to expand it much more. 
but I will. I have got this here, of course, as I've said before. I've got this here set up if I absolutely desperately need it. Now, these just need access to a type of luxury good. We can just provide them with it, and that should be fine. So, I'll come back in once we're up to Modest Estate, unless something happens. Okay, so you should know what that sign means. We've got another plague of locusts willing to come in and destroy the crops. Just came back quite successfully from that battle, Kyrie. It hasn't done anything yet. Or if we now have stately manners to require a second type of white, a uh, second type of luxury good, and then um, that's going to be a problem. There we are running into issues with employment. That's just simply because we had a lot of aging. Uh, so I devolved a couple of blocks. It's just taking a long time to restabilize this area, but it's coming along not too bad. The only problem now is we're st uh, struggling a little bit to provide everyone with access to the third type of entertainment. Some houses are not getting access to, like, musicians and dancers and things like that. So that's a little bit of a problem. What was that? That was a... Shrine to Patar, another bunch of, bunch of grain, which is not too much of a problem. We had more than enough anyway, but we'll just accept more. Which we can't fulfill, which is unfortunate, but we'll just um, set up another yard right here. Yep. Nope. Yeah, there's too much grain in the system there, so we can't really get rid of this because it's, it's just sort of annoying, but we've got too many farms now, which is not a problem. Uh, Shred of a tab is right there. Let's just put that back. And um, I'll just, you know, I'll just dump. Uh, except that gift that we don't really need. Except, except this partial gift because I'm keeping them waiting too long, we'll just take it. Fine, we'll take at least some of it, at least it's an acceptance, not a denial. And uh, that is just stuffed us over a little bit, but we could just increase our barley production just to make sure we've got as much as we can. But this barley uh, thing, I'm just going to empty it because we don't need it anymore. And this could just be set up to maximum barley, which should be fine. So we've got enough grain there, we've got plenty of fish. It's starting to stockpile, but it's just a little bit low, so maybe I need just a couple more fishing boats over here. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Alright, the fish will stockpile. It's already maxed out in most of these houses, so it really isn't too much of a concern. So all I need to do is set um, this to import. We're not going to export any more luxury goods. We don't need to. That will evolve these into the top level housing. But they require a fair type of food. Now, we had to do that anyway because of the fact that we need a zoo to meet the culture requirement here of 80. We need a zoo past 70, so by default we're going to have to import uh, game meat from Baharia Oasis. So we're just going to do that right now and that will satisfy the fair type of food anyway. Uh, chickpeas aren't really worth it because you can only get a small amount from Maydoom and a small amount from Eonet, so it's not worth it. So we're just going to provide chickpeas because that's better. This house is struggling to evolve because of desirability, but we can solve that very easily with a statue. And that should uh, get up to the, the top level. So we'll have possibly 10 palatial estates, but I'm not too sure. Nine will be enough, I think. Uh, just for the reference, uh, we are in 21 BC. Uh, in historical fact, Cleopatra was dead in 31 BC, so we're playing well past our death, um, but that's not a problem. Alright, I'm going to stabilise the city and then we're going to start working on importing the needed resources to build the Caesarium. We're just going to go down here. Okay, so here we go. We've got nine palatial estates and we've got 10,000 people just at that very moment, which is very good. Unemployment is way out of control all of a sudden. That's simply because we devolved a bunch of houses earlier. And that's brought in a lot of younger people, so that is giving us unemployment. And that's giving me the opportunity right now to start thinking about building the Caesarium. Now, we need linen over here. We're just going to not do that. There's no point. So over here, I've set up an area to import some granite. Now, we only require eight blocks of granite. The entire mount is mostly just marble. So we don't really need to worry too much about granite. It can just go right here from own, whatever they are. They will be coming into the map somewhere and import some marble, um, granite, rather. I've opened up trade with Enkome, they're now selling as marble. In fact, since we don't need this ship right, I'm just going to delete that and replace it with a yet another dock. I mean, look at how much dock congestion we've got here. How many trade routes do we have open at our water trade routes? We've got Eonet, Planet, Enkome, Norsos, and Aphthus. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 water trade routes. That's 10 boats. That's a bit extreme. So we are now cutting back on things we don't need and just focusing on this. Now, we are exporting Papyrus again. 
but only when there's more than 6,000 in stock uh, so more than two yards, but it's got an odd number of units, so that's a kind of a problem. So now that we've got this, they will fully evolve, uh, they will fill up over time. They were sat at uh, some lower levels for a little while, which helped to just stabilize them. I've also gone ahead and put down a second bazaar, just to keep these completely stable. The, this one wasn't getting access to enough fish, so I have made sure that they've got enough fish. Uh, unfortunately, not enough game meats coming in, but that's not really a concern. If needed, I just import some additional food from Maydoom. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to import chickpeas from Maydoom as well. And um, you can just buy whatever is available. Just buy whatever food types there are, you can just get them. And uh, one thing to note is we have 16,000 grain uh, baskets of grain in stockpile. We have way too much stuff in this city, but we are just overdoing all production because why not? So yeah, I'm going to go and place down this area right here, and I'm just going to time lapse the construction of this one. I'm not even going to show you the building of the mausoleum, you know what they look like. And there's the Caesarium completed. The holy temple and resplendent garden courtyards of the Caesarium are at long last complete. Word of its magnificent beauty is already spreading throughout the region. Let's just pause to take a look at it. It looks absolutely stunning. Now, the granite at the end there was only really just to complete these little granite obelisks, which is fine because that's going to simplify everything, but that just looks so stunning. I mean, if we turn it around there, that looks great. So this monument just faces whatever mo uh, direction the map's facing. So it's not very realistic. Manifest asking for more beer. We've got plenty. We can just send that off. We're not even going to sell, sell any more beer. There's no point in it anymore. But is anyone buying beer? If someone's set to buying beer, they're going to get screwed up by the odd lots that I like to call. 500. There's some beer. Okay, so we'll just clear out all this Dockland stuff later. So there we go. We've got the Caesarean. Now we've got 10,000 people. Now. We are starting to run into some labour issues because I think the, the, the palatial estates are now full up. They've got 200, 200. Six, there's like 1800 people in this one area alone. Now we are going to need more people in order to keep the city stable because we are about to have a crash and that's simply because people are ageing again. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a road around the Caesarium just to make it look even nicer and I'm going to fill out a little housing block here and I'll find a place to put down the final mausoleum somewhere. I'm not too sure where, but I'll find a place for it. Maybe I'll just cram it in the corner. I don't know. Anyway, time to go for victory, I think, folks. Okay, so here's this final housing block. I'm not going to evolve it too high. We're not just going to go any higher than a common residence, but it's going to have all the services needed. Now, culture is way too low. Now, let's just check a look on our palatial estates. We've still got nine palatial estates. It's not actually that hard to get them. And once they're up there, they're stable as heck. It's it's getting to that level is actually the hardest bit. But once you've got to that level, they're perfectly stable, so it's not a problem. Now, in terms of the mausoleum, I'm probably just going to put that here because of the fact that there's a nice big space for it. I'll just probably put it there-ish. And uh, it's not a problem. We are importing the sandstone from multiple trade partners, so they're doing that. I've got 
number of getting yards over here, and there's some accepting yards here as well, so it's not too much of a problem. Uh, prosperity and kingdom rating are pretty much max. Uh, let's just send a small gift. Stop piling funds just for the last mission, because why not? The last mission is not that difficult, and I can't be bothered to do it properly, that final mission, because it's such an easy mission that we might as well just cheat through it almost. Uh, now, we are going to have to work on getting our culture up, so what I'm going to do is, uh, simultaneously as well as building the mausoleum, I'm going to work on culture, because that's going to take forever to do, and it's just a lot of finagling around trying to put booths in places where they can go, and that's just going to take for bloody ever, and it will just be boring content for here on YouTube, so I will just join you when we're about to win the mission. Um, I might dispatch all the burial provisions now before the building of the mausoleum, just in case it bugs something out. So yeah, I will come back in once we're about to start working on the final push for our culture rating. Okay, so we finally got the mausoleum completed. It was a bit slow because the sandstone imports are so pathetic. I'm not sure what it was, but they were going so slow importing the sandstone, but... Never mind, we did have a bit of an instability problem here. Uh, this um, dude here was stuck trying to get pottery, which meant he stopped providing papyrus to this. So they all devolved and are now rather empty, but they will restock themselves over time, which is fine. Now, I haven't dispatched any of the burial provisions. I hope to God that doing so will not mess up this. If it does, I'll be very, very annoyed. But what we're going to do before we do anything else we're going to start with the library spam. Down here I've put down a bunch of booths and, and bandstands and that. I just sort of plastered them all over the city trying to get the culture up. It was bloody annoying. Especially when you've got some of these ones which were like not getting employees so this wasn't counting. Right, so let's just find an area to put down these things. Um, where on earth do I put these things? I, I've got them all connected to the city which doesn't help. Let's just put all of these down. There. Now, how many of that? How many of these have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, come on, that should be enough. Right? We need a zoo now. I'm going to save every time until this is done. Right, so we need to build a zoo. Now, the zoo doesn't actually have to work. Um, I've run out of space in this area, which is getting a real pain. Right, anyway, we'll put the zoo there. We need to turn straw on. Although the straw's not actually needed to, to win. Come on. One employee. Now the Senate House is <laughs> just Jesus. Uh, yeah, the Senate House, you need two of them past 11, uh, 10,000 effectively, which is a right pain. Um, you know, let's just dump it somewhere random like there. Now, come on, Jack. Right, one employee. Again with the Senate Houses. Did it actually have to. This isn't working, apparently. It's not getting enough employees, I don't think. Let's actually just delete some of this road. Right there. Okay, so we've got the... As long as that just stays working with one employee, it's fine. Uh, we make like... Was this? Well, this was higher. It's like 66,000 in taxes simply because of these. But, of course, these have devolved and run out of people, which doesn't actually help. So, we're going to take a... Uh, we're going to leave it that. We're going to take a save. How many personal savings do I have? 25,000, right? That's enough. Um, we're shot way too many people. It's because the city is massively aging. Luckily, there's no one above 70, but there's only a couple of people above 70. That helps. So, four weapons, some linen, which we started to have to import because it was getting so little, some luxury goods, and some papyrus. But done it. 80 culture, 100 prosperity, 100 kingdom, 24 monument rating, 10,000 people, and 9 palatial estates. And that is the final large city building mission in Cleopatra. Quite some goals, but it's actually really easy because you start with so much funds. As a general bit of advice, don't... Um, don't... Go with papyrus. Papyrus is sort of like a side export. Your primary export is pretty much beer and barley. There's not enough buyers of uh, uh, papyrus in the mission uh, to make it worthwhile. There's not enough reeds either to keep up with the insane requirements you need at this level. Now, I could continue on, 
but I'm not going to. Just as a note, we are about to hit uh, the AD. Now, I could have let this take over to allow that to happen, but I'm not interested. Uh, this mission can't go long enough to allow that to finish within the AD. But I'm just going to progress because I hate this mission enough already. The splendors of Alexandria and the fate of Egypt are in good hands under your direction. As expected, when you finally blessed Mark Anthony with your presence, he paid you proper homage while seeking your financial aid in furthering his goals. In fact, he became so enamored of you that he has come to Alexandria to be your companion and lover. Well, that's good to know. It's good to know that he's become my lover. Anyway, that was Cleopatra's Alexandria, Culture 80, Max at Prosperity, Kingdom Rating. Prosperity is not a goal when you've got uh, palatial estates as a, a requirement, so it's not really a concern. Finished with quite a lot of money, and 11,000 people, not too bad. I completed it quicker than I thought. I was going to take possibly longer, I thought, on this one, but given that it wasn't really that much of a challenge, you know, it's not a problem. Anyway, that is Cleopatra's Alexandria. There's one more mission after this. Click the card on the screen to head to the probably the easiest uh, Cleopatra mission so far, Actium. It's going to be quite an interesting one, that, and I'm not going to spoil it here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye now.